Hello, welcome to this little tutorial video. This in this video, we're going to be setting up um, <clears throat> the Google Cloud platform, meaning like we're going to be making a virtual computer in the Google Cloud. Okay, uh, I haven't really worked with the Cloud platform too much, but I have experimented with it and uh, got it to work and kind of messed around with it for a little bit. So uh, you will see one one virtual computer is running. Uh, the benefit to the Google Cloud is, I believe, the first year you kind of get like some free time. I believe uh, I'm not 100% sure on this, but they um, they they kind of run good. Um, <clears throat> so first off, let me introduce myself. My name is Ian Oberdorf. I am a Bachelor's of Science in Computer Information Systems, and this is my degree. That's just a virtual image. It's a uh, if you can see my fingers, it kind of got a green screen running behind me. Um, I am also a member of IEEE -E Columbus, and for IEEE -E Columbus, IEEE Columbus, I am the web administrator, and I am the uh, WebEx administrator. Now, what is that? That's just, uh, it's a volunteer organization, so I don't get paid for it, so it's nothing big and fancy. Um, last thing you see hanging on the wall over here is the, uh, <clears throat> is a little prize I got for when I was a student member uh, for getting third place in a hackathon, but it wasn't for hacking. Okay, that hackathon turned from being a hackathon into a uh, into more of a development thing. I got third place out of this development idea because uh, originally there was, I think, six to eight teams that competed. But I got third place uh, primarily because they liked my idea, even though I didn't really develop it. All I did was make a uh, make a flow chart because... Stream Deck, the tool that we were messing with was called the Stream Deck, but we were working with a 15 channel instead of this 32 channel, but they all work the same. I finally bought my own Stream Deck, uh, though, uh, earlier this year. Um, and that was, um, that happened probably, I don't recall how far back. But anyway, let's get to the main subject. You know me, I'm Ian Oberdorf. Um, <clears throat> let's get to our uh, video. In case you are wondering, yes, this is an Amazon shirt. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Amazon Smile. Uh, and it's because I work for Amazon uh, as a driver for a little while. Uh, currently, I'm out of work because I had knocked my head not too long ago. So, um, that's going to be something else. In fact, this is, that what you see on the screen right now, is the Distribution Center 5. DCM 5. Uh, it was just opened in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, actually, in Etna, Ohio, which is just a little due east of Columbus. Uh, it is an amazing building huge building i love it um but temporarily because i knocked my head i am kind of out of working there but during my time off i developed some things for them to where uh, their drivers can have an easier job so yeah anyway let's hop to we're going to start making our video all right so first thing we're going to be doing is making the cloud making a web server in the cloud of google not the, not amazon's we're making a google cloud so I suggest, because I haven't tested in any other browsers, have Google Chrome installed. I'm sure that it, this system is going to work way better in Google Chrome than it will in any other um, browser setup. So have your Google Chrome installed and ready to go. I already had a window open here, so I'm going to have this open. So what do we need to find? You need to find Google Cloud. Okay, so just in your top browser bar, just type in Google Cloud. High chances are, once you do your search, you will wind up with the uh, top website being cloud.google.com. Okay, that's what you want to go to. So, <clears throat> chances are you're already signed in and stuff. Uh, currently, I'm signed into my IEEE account. I want to be signed into my personal account because the IEEE account does not support uh, does not support the uh, Google Cloud platform. Um. Why? I mean, it'd be great if they did, because, hey, that, that'd be awesome if IEEE could do that. But I'm sure they're probably worried that it's going to be a security flaw. So they don't allow it. But anyway, the Google Cloud. So you're most likely going to come up on this page, or probably you're, like, that's if you're signed in already. If you're not signed in, make sure you're signed in, ready to go. Um, so you're going to see, like, facts on businesses developing, uh, Compute Engine, Cloud SDK, uh, Cloud SQL all this crazy stuff all we're focusing on today is the compute engine the compute engine is where you can get uh, free cloud or free uh, not free not nothing's free in this world okay that's where you can get your servers from okay that's where you get your cloud servers 
So the best thing to do is if you look in the top right corner here, I mean, you can scroll down until you find the compute engine here, and I think that will open the same page that we're going to go to, but I prefer just hit console. This console is where you're going to be uh, doing most of your work from because it is a, uh, this is kind of where you're doing just stuff. You're just doing stuff there. So I don't need that window. I can close that window. All right, so uh, we're going to load. All right, here we are, the compute engine. So I believe this is our CPU. Load, uh, it's going to load the graph data here for us. And this tells us, like, how good is our CPUs running? Is our CPU a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I don't care. I'm not focusing on that right now because we don't have anything running. APIs, that's if we have APIs running. Uh-oh, API. Okay, I'm not too sure what that's doing all the way up like that. Ah, the uh, instant CPU utilization, 4.30 p.m. I'm not sure what happened at 4.30. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, we can scroll down. You see resources, and you see how it says compute engine one instance. That's because I have an instance running. You're not going to have anything here. Uh, billing, estimated charges for the billing period of December 1st to the 18th. Nothing being charged because I have a free tier. A free tier is where you're not paying for your server. Uh, just keep scrolling down. Nothing really fancy going on here. So, uh, okay. Uh, you got getting started. This is going to give you some in instructions on how to get started with things, creating cloud storage buckets, uh, APIs. How do, how do you deal with APIs? APIs primarily are like an access key. Uh, I believe I have one running for a application I'm trying to develop, but I'm having issues getting it running correctly. Uh, and it's that application for the for uh, the DCM5, I think I mentioned in this video. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's look over here to the left. We're going to scroll down a hair until we see compute. And in the compute area, we're going to find compute engine. Just click on compute engine. Give us a few seconds as we load. All right, here we are. So <clears throat> we have a compute engine sitting here. Now this is the server I already have running. And you can see that uh, it gives us a lot of nice ways we can connect. Uh, you can open in a browser window, open a window on a custom port, open them, blah, blah, blah. Let's try open browser window. Now, you're not going to have this ready to go yet, okay? I'm just showing you how you can how you can connect. All right, so it's giving it a second to load. There we go. Connecting. It's going to transfer the SSH keys to the virtual machine. Just give it a few seconds. This is this is just a sampler. All right, I'm just showing you like what you can do, how you can connect through a browser. That's that, that I think is pretty nice. Being able to connect through a browser for SSH systems, that is a uh, pretty nice feature in cloud computing. Now it might take a few seconds, and you do have to know how to navigate to this page and all, but you could do it from any computer. Uh, I can go on my friend's computer and say, hey, can I just uh, check my server real fast? My server, I think, might be having a problem. Uh, okay, there's a problem. Um, you can just say, like, hey, my server might be having an issue. I just need to check it real fast. You can just open up their Google Chrome browser, go to this website, sign in, and then you can uh, see your website, or you can see your web server. So we're connecting, migrating to OS login. Give it a second. Just trying to get in. Okay, I, I don't know why this is failing because I did this earlier. We'll see if this works. I mean, I just connected a few minutes, like right before I did this video, so I don't know why it's failing. Okay, it says we're connected. There we go. So here's kind of what you'll get. Uh, you can go full screen. It's just like you're, you're actually connected to the server. We can do LS. Okay, we're not in a file that has more folders. We can, uh, let's see, we're going to CD space forward slash, okay, LS. There we go. So we are inside of, a, uh, inside of the server. Uh, you can see the host fingerprints. I don't care. Uh, a little opening message saying welcome, uh, documentation, cool stuff like that. 
Uh, what's interesting is you can actually click on things, I guess. And that's going to open up some uh, information for you. And that's because this is a uh, this is inside of a web browser. Honestly, a real Ubuntu like SSH session. It won't let you hover a mouse. Okay. Uh, apparently, you can't like hover over your pages that you need to navigate to. Um, let me get back to that empty folder so I can display more. So um, we have ls. Let me actually show you one other thing. ll. That's going to give me all the facts on these uh, pages. But we're going to go cd space. You can do the tilde signal, which is above your tab, and that's going to take you back to the home directory that we were in earlier. Or you can navigate to it by doing uh, – I'm going to go back to the former file we were in. Hold on. cd space, period, period. Okay. Form slash cd. Okay. So – Okay, CD space, we're going to go forward slash, enter, so I can show you how to get back to this by using this window. All right, so you can't see it right now, so I'm going to hide my camera for a second. So uh, all you have to do to get back to that directory, like I said, you can use the tilde option, or you can do CD space, uh, home. Okay, and then we LS, and then you select your name, CD, uh, IAN, blah, blah, blah. Okay, ls. All right, so we're in, into our uh, file. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that just gives you a sample of what you can do. Um, sorry, wrong camera. Uh, so that kind of shows you how to get it set up. That's that's just a sample of what, what you're going to be able to do in the end here. Okay, I'm going to leave that server. So how do you get your own server built? Well, let's make one. So at the top here, you see where it says VM instances. What you're going to do, uh, you're going to create an instance. If you already have an instance created, you can do import, and that means like you got a, uh, f a full saved file, and you're just going to upload it. Um, these other buttons, I believe you have to have an instance selected. So stop is just going to shut down your instance. Pa uh, suspend, that just means like just freeze its state. Don't do nothing until I come back. Reset, that's like I'm resetting my computer. That's if you went like down here and chose the uh, power option, then chose reset. Um, delete, that means get rid of the instance. I no longer want this instance, which I will be doing with one of the instances we're going to make today. Okay. External IP, that's your IP that you can access from the outside. Internal IP is the internal network because when you create servers, you make an internal network. In fact, look at this 0.2. Interesting. 0.2, that's the IP address in my private network that I'm creating in the cloud. When I create another device, you're going to see the external IP address might be something else, but the internal IP address will match this network. Okay? So, let's create our instance. Just hit that little plus at the top there. I went a little fast there, honestly. Let's just go back so I can show you. That instance right there, okay? Just hit that button. Okay, give it a second to load. Buffer, buffer, buffer. Okay, so this is where you're going to assemble your uh, little instance here, okay? So, first things first, what are you going to call your instance? I will call mine the, uh, I would call it Ubuntu, but I already have another one named Ubuntu, and it's going to give me a problem. So, I'm going to say this is my uh, WordPress server, okay? We'll make a WordPress server, okay? So, uh, and here's one problem. you got to make sure your name is completely lowercase, okay? All right, so next up, we add a label. We say... Uh, Honestly, you don't have to really worry about adding labels. I don't. I don't prefer to add labels, but I think you can add like uh, key to add. Uh, be assigned at the time of instance creation. Labels for an existence existing instance may be edited. On the, I'm not really too sure exactly what the labels are doing. I never really messed with labels before. I'm thinking those are more of a. As you see, they are optional. I think they just uh, help you organize. 
key value pairs to your sources. Use labels to indicate different environments, services, teams, and so on. So that's more like a way you can label saying like it's a uh, WordPress server or something. Uh, the region, region is permanent. Okay, I don't care. That's just saying like uh, where do I want my server to sit? So say I'm making duplicate servers. I don't want them both being on the same side of the earth because probably if it was in Los Angeles, probably there's wildfire someday, I don't know, and it burns down the data center. Well, then I have a second copy of that same instance that I had in Los Angeles here in Iowa so that they can, uh, so that say my first instance dies, then I have this backup instance. It's kind of one big thing in computers. You kind of want to have backups. All right. Next up, machine family. Uh, compute optimized, memory optimized, GPU, general purpose. So uh, as you scroll through these, you can see uh, what type of server we're after. So general purpose. It's for common work workloads, optimized for cost and flexibility. So that's more, um, are we making just a website server? Uh, compute optimized. High performance machine types for compute intensive workloads. Uh, memory optimized. Large memory machine types for memory intensive workloads. So that's more like uh, big databases. I'm going to store a lot of data files or uh, say I'm making a... Uh, a video storage system. Say I have uh, all these videos and I want to make my own Netflix system. Something like that. GPU, that means it's going to be uh, a high performance computing and visualization workload. So that means it's going to be a really, really hard working computer. It's going to be doing so much math, really complex math. So just know what you're after. So CPU platform selection based on availability. You scroll down, choose what what type of uh, instance you want. First generation is more powered by Intel Skylake CPU platform. Uh, CPU platform selection based on availability. That's just saying like uh, we'll give you a plat we'll give you a CPU based on what's available. I honestly don't care. Uh, Intel Cascade Lake platform. So that means that it's a uh, the servers. Uh, the server, uh, the server will use a CPU that is produced by Intel in the Cascade Lake. Cascade Lake is this the. Uh, it's not like saying it's an i nine or something. That's saying like, what generation of processor is it? Okay, if it was a Cascade Lake, uh, so that's saying like it's a Series five i nine. Okay, I'm not sure if it's Series five. I don't quite have that book in the back of my head, but. Uh, Next, you have N2D. That's going to be uh, powered by an AMD processor. Okay. So, Intel or AMD, you have that choice, or else you can just go, like, I don't care what processor I get. Just give me a processor. Okay. Machine type. Okay. How much memory do I want? Do I want to have uh, one gigabit of memory because I'm not doing, like, so much hard work? Am I wanting two gigabits? Uh, four gigabits. Am I going to be working like really hard? Is do I need a lot more memory? So am I going to be running a fortune of websites here? What am I going to do? What type? What do I need? So that's kind of what that's looking for. Am I going to be running a game server? Okay, that's where you look at that. For that. So uh, primarily, we're just making a simple low end server. Just choose the uh, choose that, and it's not going to be eating so much. Virtual CPU, one shared core. So that's saying I have only one core of my CPU. Let's try this. Okay, still the same. We'll try standard. Ah, there we go. Now we have two virtual CPU cores. So you see how that's going? Let's go to high memory. Two two cores. All right, so what we're going to do, we're just going for a small... Oh, actually, here we go. You can select your virtual CPU cores. So say I need a high-end processor. Six virtual CPU cores. So that's uh, kind of interesting. We're just going with a small micro, just because this is an experimental computer. This because you're trying to learn. It's it's a learning environment. Just go with the smallest option you have. Be in the shared core, V1, whatever. It's a one core processor, meaning it's not going to be snappy. Uh, it's low memory, meaning it's not going to run a lot of programs at once. Uh, Confidential VM service, enable a confidential computing service on this VM instance. That's meaning it's going to be uh, like they can't go in and just edit things for you at all. It means like this is going to be completely encrypted. Uh, container, deploy a container image to this VM instance. Okay, so that's more of a, uh, I believe, um, uh, you have like a certain OS image you want. So you made a, you have, uh, you've made an, 
image that you want in this server. So if you did that, kudos to you. Good job. Uh, next up, the boot disk. So what do we want our boot disk to be? Do we have a boot file or uh, what do we want our image to be? Okay. Um, I don't know why that's taking a bit. Okay. So this is where you select the boot disk is where you're selecting your images. Okay. Public images. Okay. What do they have? Custom images. That's where you provide one. Snapshots. That's where you had a cop. You have a uh, copy. A di existing disks. That's where you have a disk already created that you want to use. Public images, pretty much. Operating system, what do you want your operating system to be? In this sample, we are creating an Ubuntu, okay? I suggest everyone try Ubuntu uh, because it is one of the highest end, like one of the highest used web servers out there that is in the Linux platform. More, I believe last time I read somewhere that uh, Ubuntu takes up almost 98% of Linux web servers. Okay, so 98% of Linux, Linux web servers are Ubuntu. So I suggest you select that. Uh, the version, you can go through the list. As you see, you got all these different versions created. LTS, uh, all this stuff. Um, I would suggest probably go with a 2010 because that is pro that's most likely the latest version. Size 10 gigabits. Uh, boot disk type standard. SSD, balanced, uh, what type of disk do we want? Um, honestly, uh, a standard for disk, uh, standard disk is most likely going to be a, a uh, HDD, a hard disk drive. SSD, solid state drive, I'd probably go with that because it's going to be running better for you. Um, once you have all that set up, you're good to go. You hit select. We're going to go down a little more. Identity and API access. Service account. Compute engine default service account. Um, yeah, that's if you make a that's if you have multiple service accounts. So you probably have several people involved or something. Uh, allow default access, allow full access, and select set access for each API. So that's saying like, uh, do we want this to be able to access all my APIs? Do we want uh, only certain APIs, uh, how do we want it set up, okay? That's if you're doing like some big cloud API thing. You're making some special game that communicates back to your server. So you're making a mobile app game, probably like say, uh, what's a good one? Um, Among Us. You probably have Among Us. Among Us primarily communicates back to a server and then sends data back out to the users. So when you're playing Among Us, you know how you have to be connected to the internet? That's because you're connecting to a server, and that server is collecting your X and Y location in the game. All right? That's kind of how that works. Next up, the firewall. Okay, do we want to allow certain types of traffic uh, in, and out of our in and out of our server? By default, HTTP and HTTPS, that's uh, primarily saying, like, this is going to be hosting a website, and yes, this I plan on this hosting a website, so... I'm going to select both of those. Why do I select both? Well, because uh, one is uh, the HTTP traffic is primarily unsecured. HTTPS is secured. That's saying, like, I made, um, I put my web server together uh, with Apache, and we have, uh, I only set it up for unsecured websites. So that's what we have there. I didn't put I didn't fix it up for a uh, access key, so uh, HTTPS will not work on the server yet. So that's saying we're accepting port 80 and port 443. All right, that's primarily all that is. Management and security. If, do we have uh, do we have anything we need to fix up in here? Uh, availability policies, stuff like that. No security. Do we have any uh, special things we need to do? Block uh, project wide SSH keys. Okay. Uh, disks. Uh, how do we want our disk encrypted? Um, next up, the networking. How are we? What's our network going to be called? Uh, Soul Terrence, Tennessee. So I believe the networking factor that's being. Uh, are we going to have it connected to that server? So if you see the default. Network interface. Network interface is permanent. So, 
do we want this being on its own private network or do we want to connect it to another one? So this is our default network. This is the same uh, network that is already set up for the other server. So when we connect this one, it's going to be on that same exact network. All right. So uh, scroll up. We're done with that. Um, your free trial credit will be used for this VM instance. So you do get free trial credits, but they will expire eventually. All we have to do now, just hit create, and you're going to have a server being created. Okay? As you see, we have uh, WordPress being created. Uh, retry. What's going on here? EC2 instances does not support on-host maintenance. Terminate unless they are preemitable. On-host maintenance. Terminate unless they are preemitable. All right, so it looks like we kind of jacked something up. All right, we'll trash that, and we're going to try to recreate. Apparently, I probably went with too low of an instance. To notification, create VM instance WordPress at its boot disk WordPress. EC2 instances, or E2 instances, do not support on-host maintenance. Terminate unless they are pre-emitable. All right. I don't care. All right, we're going to, uh, let's try to recreate that real fast. I'm going to go back through, and I'm going to make a better instance. The other instance was the E2. So, honestly, primarily, we just kind of made a little owie, okay, a little jack up. Let's try this again. WordPress, okay, we're fine with that. E2, machine type, E2 medium. Probably, probably that might be the problem. I might have made it the uh, probably because I went down to that. We're just going to leave it how it is, okay, just to see if this works now. Uh, enable, allow default access. I'm going to allow those. We're going to create. Okay, let's see if we got a fingers crossed. We're going to have a good one. Where's it going to jack up? So you don't expect to just instantly create an instance and then poof, be able to access. Uh, because it does take a few seconds because it you got to think this is a brand new computer being set up this is as if I took a uh, I took my old laptop and I turned it into an Ubuntu computer I put I have to put this hard this external SD card in I have to go through the whole startup process I have to do the whole installation um hold on I'm gonna sneeze okay I guess not. I feel like there's a sneeze about to come. But anyway, so apparently our instance looks ready. It says uh, WordPress, and then as you see in the top corner here, we got a notification. Great VM instance, WordPress, and it's boot disk, WordPress, and it's a new Ubuntu. So, okay, we're good. All right, let's try uh, clicking on it. We're going to see our facts. Do we have everything set up properly? Let's see, remote access, monitoring. Okay, the CPU utilization, it's going to load for a few. Why it loads so long? Don't ask me. Uh, it shows like all the facts. So back to details. Uh, screenshot. What is the screenshot? Unable to capture screenshot for this instance. Please ver verify that the instance is up and running. So I believe that's uh, if it had a picture going on. I can snap the screenshot just to see like what's going on on there because someone else might be on it or something. Uh, the instance ID, that's just the unique ID for Google to know which instance you have. Machine type, that's the facts on the type of machine. Reservation, automatically choose, don't care. Uh, CPU platform, what is this, what's the, C, the CPU on this machine? Well, it is a AMD instead of an Intel. So we have an AMD processor running my, my virtual machine. Where is it located at? It's in U, U.S. Central Zone A. No labels, creation time. Uh, was at this time network interface okay so what is the network interface as we see look at our IP address the internal IP address see it's a dot three where's the uh, why did we get a dot three well did you not see our in the beginning of this video we had a dot two okay um, keep scrolling we have the firewalls opened uh, detection deletion protection that's like say I don't want to ever get deleted I don't want someone to just go in and poof it's deleted, okay? Uh, if you hit the edit key here, you can edit these facts, okay? It makes it like so you can just change a few things. Uh, we're not editing anything in this. On-host maintenance cannot be changed for EC2. Yes, I understand. 
We're not changing anything right now. Um, create machine image. I believe that's going to copy the image that we have at the moment. Uh, create similar. That's going to copy this machine. So say I have a uh, machine out there. That's my default image. Say I, I fixed it up to where it'll run WordPress properly. Um, like it's set up for WordPress, but I know I'm going to need way more computers in order for this to work right. So WordPress is running on this on this computer ready to go. Uh, what I can do is I can hit create similar and it's going to take everything that I downloaded. So probably say you're going to have multiple Ubuntu servers because the first thing you should do whenever you get a new Ubuntu server or any Ubuntu computer, uh, when you connect the, for, for the first time, so I'm going to go to the details here and we're going to choose the remote access. When you connect for the first time, let me tell you this. The best thing you can do, let's get it connected and I'm going to show you. All right, so the first thing you should do whenever you connect, so this, this is what you're going to get by default, okay? Linux, WordPress, did I not select Ubuntu? The program's included with DBNG and new Linux. Okay, so when I went through, I didn't select, make that be an Ubuntu. But anyway, for any server, you should always go sudo apt-get update. Now, this is going to show an error because this is Linux. Okay, ready? Oh, never mind. I guess this one has the APT. All right. Then you go sudo apt-get upgrade uh, space dash y. Why do I say space dash y? Is because you would originally get a message saying, are you sure you want to upgrade? Okay. So to, by to bypass that... Uh, the factor of saying yes, I want to up, I want to accept this. You have to do a space dash y. Okay, the space dash y overrides. So if you know, if you know that when after you run this command, it's going to ask you a question, you just have to do that space dash y. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, so primarily that's all you have to do. Uh, one thing with security. Say you're going to have a, a friend working on the server as well. Okay. So I'm going to have probably my friend, he will be uh, working with me as well. This friend that I'm making this video for. Say he's going to be my uh, co-worker. What I have to do is I have to do the create user uh, command. Okay? Let me pull that up because I don't have it in the back of my head at the moment. I know you have to do this. Okay? Um, let's see here. Uh, SU create user. All right. To create a sudo user on Ubuntu, okay. Now, if this honestly, that's if I want this guy to be a sudo user, okay. Uh, sudo, what you don't understand, that's saying super user do, okay. Uh, okay, so connecting, add user, okay. So use the add user, all right. So it's, um, that's if you're gonna have multiple people connected, okay. So add user space. Uh, whatever my username is going to be. So let's add user. I'm going to create, because I'm going to delete this instance. So don't think you're going to be able to go in and instantly connect to this instance because once this video is finished, I'm deleting it, okay? All my instances I'm, that I create in these videos are going to be deleted. So that's why I'm letting you see everything, okay? So don't think I'm insecure. I know security, but these, vi these instances are just for sample. So first off, SU, or I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, was it new user or create user? <laughs> See, I that's the problem with uh, <clears throat> with uh, doing so knowing so many computer commands, you kind of get lost sometimes. So, okay, add uh, <laughs> my bad. You, you good thing you couldn't see that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch my screen because you you can't see everything. Um. <clears throat> What you didn't see is I put in ASS instead of add. <laughs> All right. Add user. All right. And we're going to say, uh, we're going to add, uh, let's say my si my friend, Nick. N-I-C-K. Okay. Add user Nick. Enter. Oh, hold on. Sudo add user space Nick. Okay. Adding user Nick. So the new password. We got to create him a password. Uh we're just going to make it be a simple one. 
password. Password updated successfully. Okay, so now we're going to give him some facts. Okay, his full name is uh, Nick Moore. He's my best friend. Uh, room number. Does he have an office number? Okay, he doesn't have an office number. Um, I'm just going to give him a zero. Uh, his work phone. Uh, let's just give, give him one. All right, so I just made that one up. His home number is the same. Okay. Uh, other information. That's just saying uh, what's his role in the server primarily. Um, so I just got to look back. Is that information correct? If yes, then we could just say yes. If no, then just say no. But we'll give him a yes. Okay. Now, say I want to check my user, make sure that he is... Uh, I want to check my user, make sure he runs properly. I created him his password and stuff. He has to go back in and change his password, okay? Because I just gave him a default password, and I'm going to say, hey, on your first time connecting, just log in and then uh, type in uh, this is your password, and then uh, change your password to your, own, to your desire. Because I shouldn't know anyone's password, okay? It's very wrong for any tech, tech, uh, uh, tech geek to know everyone's password. So, say I'm going to work on a computer, I should not ask someone saying, hey, uh, so I can get into your computer, what's your password? The main thing to do is to have them log in. Uh, if I know that I'm going to have to log, like if I know I'm going to have to shut the computer down and be able to log back in, I have to tell them like, hey, uh, I'm going to need you to change your password temporarily so that I can get in easy. So I don't have to remember your password. Like, I just need a temporary password until I'm done with it. Okay, so I'll say uh, here, I'm going to just, I just need you to tell me, uh, I need you to go to change your password, and I'm going to write down my password, uh, or I'm going to put my password in, and then when I'm done, I'm going to bring it back to you, I'm going to log in, go to the password page, and then have you change your password back to how it was, okay? So that's that's just knowledge for text, okay? And I believe that uh, in the book I am currently reading, because I'm trying to get studied for the A plus exam, uh, I believe the book even says that what I'm reading by Mike Myers, he even says that the best thing to do is to ask someone to change your password, and it is a part of the exam, okay? I haven't taken the exam, so I can't guarantee it's on there, okay? I just trust this guy. He's got years of experience. I've taken his A plus course on LinkedIn, and I decided to go read his book now. So that's that. So, once we've created our user, the best thing to do is now go in and uh, do this. S-U, space, uh, and then you put his username. Okay, enter password. We're going to put in the test password. All right, we are logged in as Nick. So, CD space, uh, do the tilde, LS, okay, CD space, period, period, to go back. Okay, so we have two users. So we have the uh, the administrator, which is Ian Oberdorf, and we have the Nick. Now here's the thing: Nick cannot use sudo commands. So sudo, uh, or actually, you know, what? I want to test something. Nano uh, test dot txt. Okay, testing. Okay, uh, Control X. Yes. Enter. All right, so as you see, uh, when we created this, uh, when we created this uh, user, he has denied permission to be able to save things. So that's something I'd have to go in at, into the settings and give him permission for. Okay, let's do uh, go Control X. Uh, no. All right, so let's try sudo Control and see if he can do this. Test dot t xt okay we trust you have received the usual lecture from the local system administrator it usually boils down to these three things respect the privacy of others think before you type with great power comes great responsibility that's nice uh pseudo password for nick nick is not in the pseudoers file so that says that my friend 
uh, who I gave permission to this computer, he cannot use sudo commands. So it's it prevents him from typing. So let me go back to my user, and we're going to sample how my user, being the administrator, can use the sudo command. Okay, so su uh, to i uh, or sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong password. Okay, su and. Okay, I've, I've got the wrong password here. Okay. Hmm. All right, so I'm not sure what exactly my password is because I never set my password in the server. That's that's another thing you need to do. Uh, I believe the password by default should be your uh, should be your um, uh, it should be uh, your Google password, I believe. Oops, I believe it should be your Google password to log in. Apparently. I can't remember my darn Google password. Um, so let me clear the screen. So I'm going to log out of here, and then I'm going to log back in and change my password for this. So leave. We're going to go back to uh, the cloud platform. Okay. We're going to select the sign in again. Hopefully it signs in as me instead of Nick. Okay. Is it didn't log in. There we go. Pop-up blocked. What's this? I'm gonna allow the pop-ups because those are uh, those are primarily notifications for your server. Okay, untitled about blah blah blah. We're gonna log in. Drum roll, please. Okay, we're connecting. Now, if you see uh, this message, it says you can you can sign in easier by using the OS login. That's saying you can use Putty. Okay, I am not showing how to use Putty. Okay, these videos are just showing how to set up your environment and use it from the web browser. So I might make a video later on how to do how to connect the other ways. But okay, last login, blah blah blah. Let me uh, figure out how to edit my password real fast because, like I said, it's been a long time for me since I used this stuff. My bad, but whatever. All right. Uh, change user password. And we're, I believe we're using in Ubuntu. So how to change password in Ubuntu. Open the terminal application to change password for username. Tom in Ubuntu. Pseudo password Tom. Uh, to change password for root user on Ubuntu Linux, sudo password root, uh, and change your own password for Ubuntu. Okay, so let's try that again. We're going to go back into the uh, web browser, uh, sudo, uh, or hold on. Let's see, what does it say? Uh, change password, type sudo password. Okay, so sudo password. Uh, sudo password my name okay uh, password okay what we're using bash let me see how do I change a password I'm sorry it's just been long for me I've uh, switch I currently uh, primarily had switched almost a year ago to a Windows server environment because uh, I kind of wanted to switch, like kind of learn this Windows environment. And I'll probably show that uh, in another video. Okay, so how do I change user password in Ubuntu? Okay, I'm sorry about this. Uh, sudo password, oh, passwd, sudo passwd. That is the problem. Uh, sudo passwd. All right, there we go. Okay. 
Okay. Let's try uh, make sure our password worked by using by logging into my second account. That's you, uh, Nick. Okay, S U. Uh, I'm. Okay. All right. So the password switch worked. So uh, I would suggest probably the first thing you should do after you log in, make sure you do those commands I showed at the beginning, which was uh, sudo apt dash get uh, update and then sudo apt dash get upgrade dash yes. Okay. Make sure you do those in the beginning, and then make sure after those are done, you do the sudo passwd, and then your username, which is what appears in front of the at signal. And then uh, once you're done with that, you can um, you can change your password, and then make sure you test it. Okay, so uh, just make sure it works, and that's primarily just so that you can run your sudo commands easier. Um, now, if you saw me doing that one little command thing where I did nano, so nano, uh, I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna show you one cool thing here. Okay, this is gonna teach you how to do your HTML. So if you're making a web web server, okay, you're wanting to host websites using plain HTML, okay, HTML5. All you have to do, type nano uh, uh, index dot HTML. All right. Actually, make sure you add sudo at the beginning. Okay, sudo nano index HTML enter. Okay, we're gonna do uh, HTML on HTML. All right, forward slash HTML. All right, and then we're gonna do tab head tab. One thing I like about the uh, the nano editor is how it actually automatically captures your uh, like it'll change color based off what your command is so body all right and then we're gonna do h1 uh, hello world and then forward slash h1 all right so <clears throat> this is our uh, little web page that we made it's all it's gonna say is uh, hello world and uh, it is this the basic web page that anyone should learn how to make? Okay, HTML head head body h1 body HTML. Okay, it's the easiest thing. I mean, go onto your computer. Just go on your personal computer. Type in uh, Notepad. Okay, Notepad. All right. Do this same exact uh, sentence that I just did. Okay. Do the HTML. All right. Do. HTML, but make sure you put the closer, which the closer is a forward slash, okay? All right, and then we go tab, head, all right, tab, forward slash, head, tab, body. And honestly, in this case, you honestly didn't really need to put the head, but I always do. Uh, forward slash, body, okay? And then in the body area, make sure you put uh, H1, and then forward slash h1. Always, always make sure you put the first and last commands in. And then type in hello world. Now, save it properly. Go to file, save as. Okay. If you just hit save, it's going to save it as a .txt. What you want to do is go to all files and then save it as uh, hello world dot html make sure it says dot html at the end okay and then save it all right once you have it saved you can just go to your desktop or wherever you saved it let me shrink this down there you go hello world html click on that we're going to open in google chrome or google chrome and there we go we have our website so you got that's kind of off the page what we were doing here but anyway that's just so you could see what we did okay now we have to just control X out of this. And we want to hit yes to save. All right. Now, ls, we have index.html saved in my thing. And say I want to check it, we could do cat index. And we could just go ind and then hit tab and it's going to automatically finish our right for us. Hit enter. And there we go. We could preview our set. We preview what we just wrote. So, 
that's just a little introductory that I gave gave as a bonus to this video. So, <clears throat> primarily, all we did in this video was we created a Google Cloud web server. Okay, so Google Cloud. Primarily, what the Google Cloud was called was the Google Cloud Platform. Okay, so Google Cloud Platform. We created an instance. Uh, say you need to get back to your instance just to check on your instance. Say you open multiple instances. You just go to VM instances and you can see all your instances. Okay, so my Ubuntu instance, my uh, WordPress instance. You can see external IP address. This is how the external outside world can connect to you okay internal IP address that's how these two devices connect to each other okay so you'll see look at that 128.0.2 128.0.3 if I went to uh, ping between the two devices right now if I was to do the ping command which I believe it's uh, something else in in uh, web in uh, Ubuntu servers I believe it's thing f-i-n-g I believe uh, but if you if you do that command and type in the IP address of your other web server, if you created two, you will see that other device by that IP address. If you try finding a different IP address, it won't find it. So, yes, these devices might be on completely different uh, networks, although they actually are in the same data center, according to these. Okay, So, get out there, try this out. It's a great it's a great tool because it will help you learn, okay? You don't have enough computers. Probably your your home computer is a really laggy computer. It probably uh, it probably has only uh, 2 gigs of RAM, okay? You probably have one of those old old computers that you could use, but it will only accept 2 gigs of RAM. So, if it only has 2 gigs of RAM, there's no way you can open up the uh, the the virtual box and create a virtual machine on it. The best thing to do, I honestly don't even like using a virtual machines, even though this thing has 16 gigabits of RAM. I believe it has 16 gig of RAM. Let me see. Settings. Uh, system. Uh, where's the memory? Hold on. View the RAM info. Yeah, about... There's where it is. Look at this. Installed RAM, 16 gigs. 15.8 gigs are usable. I prefer still using a cloud platform, even when it has this much memory available. Like, yeah, if you if I did open up my uh, my uh, <clears throat> virtual box, any any computer I put in virtual box, I only give two gigs of RAM. Okay, that's because they are just emulated computers. Okay, I want them to run slow. Because I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to understand their environment. So I will show you how to use the Oracle Virtual Machine, but primarily we're trying to learn how to use the web the web uh, environments. So all I could say, get out there, try the Google Cloud platform, learn it for yourself because it is powerful. It is where computers are going today. Okay. If you don't like using Ubuntu, find my find another video I might make in the future showing how to make a Windows computer. In this Google Cloud platform. So this is part of a series of videos that I am producing primarily to teach how to access cloud computers. How to get started in cloud computing. Cloud computing is where the future is right now. If you know cloud computing and you understand how to use environments like the Google Cloud platform and AWS, then you can get far in your future. If you create videos like this and you tell your, you tell your boss that uh, plans to that you want to try to apply to say hey look I understand cloud computing because I see you guys were looking to go to cloud computing to see how much I know on cloud computing please go watch my videos go watch the videos I produce to show how much I know about cloud computing how I try teaching others how to use cloud computing and they might probably hire you faster I don't know I can't guarantee that so don't say like uh, oh I'm gonna try that now no don't just don't do that but cloud computing is the future cloud computing is where you can go. So learn cloud computing. Okay. Windows computers in the cloud. They work. They will teach you good. Okay. You uh it's really hard to get a computer today, a personal computer that runs off of Windows 2019. Okay? You don't know what 2019 is until you have access to a server. Okay? So Windows 2019, 
This is Windows 2019. This is in the cloud. And you know what? This web server, being a 2019, look at this. I have access to stuff that you can't really get access to on a home computer. When you understand how to use Server Manager and stuff like that, you can go far, okay? This is an AWS server, okay? And you can kind of tell by seeing this stuff, okay? EC2 instances, that's an AWS, okay? E2 instances, that is a Google Cloud platform. So this server, what do I use this server for? Well, Minecraft. This, oh, shut up. Hey, Google, quiet. Um, but this, this is Minecraft, okay? This is a Minecraft server running on a cloud server. This is an experiment. This teaches me how to run servers. This is a game server hosted by me through my computer. Why does, why do I do this? Because look at this. I can learn how to make games better. Future maps. The, these are maps I plan to add to my Minecraft server. Uh, Minecraft, the, uh, this is like the whole, uh, setup. This is the whole nine, this is like everything. The Spigot server, you learn everything. Notepad++. Notepad++, why do I need that for Minecraft? Because I have to change certain settings. Get out there. Try servers, okay? Try your different servers. You could try this. Try what I have open right now. Try the uh, try a web server, okay? Try, building, try a remote desktop. Every computer today has the application remote desktop, but not all computers can access remote desktop, okay? Your laptop might not be able to access remote desktop because you have to have a specific breed of laptop. Your laptop has to have the operating system set up properly to be able to access remote desktop. And remote desktop is really important to understand. How about this? Putty. You need to understand putty for servers, okay? Now, I mentioned, uh, like, how to use putty, but or I, I, mentioned, I mentioned putty is a uh, great tool for working on servers, and yes, it is. It is the key to working on a lot of things. Putty, that thing could be used for working on uh, on your cloud servers using SSH, which is how we are connecting when we open this up. This is an SSH window that uh, Google is opening for us. As you see, ssh.cloud.google. Um, that's, that's what's going down. You can do a, a direct connection via SSH to that Google server. You just have to set it up. Okay. Uh, SSH is also used in uh, in networking. If you know how to work on a network stack, or if you want to learn how to work on a network stack, SSH or Putty is the one thing you need to understand. Okay. So I am telling you, get out there, learn computers, learn the cloud. Okay. It will take you far in life. So. Thank you for watching. We are coming up on the hour time limit, so I am going to end this video. And just a reminder what we went through. We went through how to build a web server in the Google Cloud Platform, how to get your the first steps to getting your server set up. We also added some bonus stuff in there, which honestly wasn't supposed to be in there, but it was added. <clears throat> um, and that was primarily everything. So thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more videos and make sure you watch all the videos I plan to add into the series. Thanks for watching again. Goodbye.